Hello and welcome to the Die Dice Tabletop. We are getting straight on with the base today. This is a devil ship that I 3D printed that's crashed. There's some drainage holes there that are also going to be used to feed wires through. The base is hollow, so I'm going to hide a battery pack in the bottom of this. We'll run it up the front. So the first thing we need to do is build the base. For this, we're going to be using a 5mm thick MDF board that we're going to mount the tau base to. So we're just going to cut it out a bit bigger than the base itself. And to use that, I got a jigsaw. Um, after taking a look and setting this up, I decided to absolutely scare myself by not realising when fitting the blade, I locked the trigger on. So this is exactly what happened when I went to plug it in. Christ. With the help of my girlfriend holding the wood down, the jigsaw made quick work of this. With the board now cut, the next step was to draw around the base to get it shaped. So I drew a second guideline around about an inch away from the inside one. This is going to help me figure out how to taper off when I come to do the sort of groundwork on the base and also give me a little bit of wiggle room just in case I haven't quite got my measurements right. However, that's looking pretty good because I want the toe to come out to the edge of the base. Next was just back to the jigsaw to get all this cut out. which, because I'm not very skilled, did end up leaving some rough edges. So I came back in with a saw and a craft knife, rounded it all off then with some sandpaper, and it was good to go. Now, in order for the feet to fit onto this base, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work just to remove this front slope bit. When we balance the feet on, there's so much wiggle room that we're just not gonna be able to get a good solid surface on that. So first step, get the Dremel, and we're just gonna cut this straight out. Because I printed the base hollow, there's a lot of supports inside, so all of these had to come out as well to make room for the battery pack. And after a lot of test fitting and making adjustments, this now fits much better. The toes were next. Most of these were fine. The main adjustment needed to be done on the one at the top, just so it was believable that it was really crushing that devilfish. So we hit the point of no return. I've just got to put faith into all the work that's been done previously, and I glue these in place. Amazingly, with resin models, super glue works so well. The bond I find is much stronger than with the typical Games Workshop plastic. A lot of adjustment would need to be done on the top toe. This didn't really sit flush and just, as I said earlier, make it look believable that it was really crushing the devilfish. So with a little bit more micro adjustment with the sander on the uh, rotary tool, we got that fitting much better, and it was time to glue it in place. Looking good. From moving the foot around and taking a look at it on the Devilfish, I wasn't quite happy with this big gaping hole that I'd created. So I decided to go back and fit the bit that I cut off back on. This was just a quick little super glue on it and it looks so much better, I think. A lot more believable that it's being crushed. And not only that now, I've got a little area for the wires to creep out of uh, and it's just a lot more believable. I did, however, have to make slight more adjustments just so it was all flush again and balanced nicely. Next, I needed to start marking out where everything was going to go and finally sit in its place. And again, I wasn't quite happy just with how the toe was fitting, so I did a little bit more fan dangling on it. As you can see, having that little piece glued back on, I think makes it look so much better when you're viewing it from an angle. A lot more believable this being crushed. Happy with how all of that was turning out, the next thing I needed to turn my attention to was getting the battery pack fitted inside of this base. So it's going to fit in there. This is hollow as I mentioned earlier, so it's just a matter of cutting out a nice little area. So I marked it up and got the rotary tool back on it. This was really satisfying to cut out all these straight lines. With that done, I just had to now do a couple of test fits of the battery case and make some minor adjustments. And look at that. With a slight bit of push, it fits in there nicely. And I can pull the wires through. Get that out of the way, 
Yes, now we can see how this is starting to look. It's getting exciting now. Bringing the base back, next thing we need to do is mark out where the battery holder is going to go. This is really simple. I just got a pencil and traced around the cut that I'd made on the inside. I also marked where the toe sits. This is so that I can come back and always make sure that I'm putting this back on exactly where it needs to be, where it all lines up with the work that I've done at the top to make it all flush. First, I didn't really know how to get this cut out, but I got a drill. As well as that, I got a drill bit that's the same size as my jigsaw piece. So I cut four holes in each corner. This would enable me then to put the jigsaw blade through into the holes, cut them, match them all up, and take the center bit out. These cuts were obviously far from perfectly straight, so I fitted the battery pack just to see how much I need to adjust them by. And it doesn't look to be that much. After tidying up the four corners, the battery pack slipped in nice. So I marked out where it needed to be and did a test fit into the base and this all looks great. And then I realized my mistake. This now won't sit flat. Pondering my blatant oversight, I decided to move on and have a look at the toes instead again. We need to drill a hole in the base of the foot for the wires to run through. There's already a hole in the bottom where I put a drainage hole during the printing. So this was just a simple matter of attacking it with the drill. And while a little bit of resin did chip off, that doesn't matter because it's going to be covered anyway. Time now to run the wires and see how this is all fitting together. So I snipped the connector off the battery pack. I'm going to be using these cables later on to run through the entire body of the Titan up to the head and back down again. So that was all looking to be lining up well. And using the marker I made earlier for where the foot should go, this all looks to be going great. And it was just as well that I decided to move on earlier because through doing that I finally had a brainwave and figured out how I was going to make this battery pack fit. All I needed to do was just make the hole on the base bigger. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but with that in mind, I drew around it just to see where I needed to cut. As you can see, not much wood that needs to be removed. And I just repeated the same step as before with the jigsaw and the rotary sander. Made it fit. Now I've got access. Time now to glue this in place. So I just loosely secured the battery pack with a uh, piece of tape. Um, I should not have done this. I should have just glued it in place first as last. I did that just in case like I needed to remove it and uh, make adjustments at any point. So I just put some super glue down and this stuck instantly. I had no time at all to move this. So thankfully I was pretty good on my first time, only just missing the marker I made. The next thing that needed to be done was to get the wiring and the on and off switch all wired up. The plan with this is to mount it on the side of the base. I'll run one wire out through the top hole connect it onto the switch and then run it back into the base. This will mean I can control it on and off from the outside. So I just glued that down, let that set, and I would come to regret that. Some of you familiar have probably already figured out what's just happened. In order to get the wire out, because it'd be very difficult to try and push it through from the inside, I pushed a piece of wire through from the outside, connected it to one of the wires, quickly soldered that on so it wasn't going to be going anywhere. And then with a quick pull, I was able to feed it through to the outside. Then quickly disconnected that and was pleased with my genius. Ha 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 ha, yes! Next is to cut the wires to size to go to the switches. So I want to leave a little bit of slack with these, just so they don't end up being too tight. Cutting the rubber off the end and giving a little twist, I was then able to solder it onto the switch. And as you can see, my soldering skills are non-existent. Doing the same now just in reverse, we solder the first wire to the negative of the switch. The other end of that goes to a wire that I'm going to feed through the hole. So I can pull this through on the other side. And then just disconnect it. Super gluing this switch down came back to haunt me. It fused the inside and when I went to turn it on, I snapped the toggle off uh, so I now can't use it. 
I realized in general that switch was going to be too flimsy, so I went on Amazon and bought some bigger toggle switches that I hot glued down to the front to avoid any more super glue accidents. Now the switch is obviously a lot fatter than the previous one, so it is going to protrude from the base, but this is going to be covered by um, texture they're going to put on it, so that'll hide it in the base. I now need to undo everything that I did previously, so the first step to that is going to be removing this switch. Came off really simply with a snip, and then I just unsoldered the wires from it and got to work sorting out the wires on the new switch. These needed to be cut to size and splayed. I'm also using some heat shrink tubing. Um, this is gonna help keep all the electrics together. I don't know how this build's gonna go and I'm not very good at wiring, so every little support that I can give this to uh, give it the best of long life as possible, I've done. That was just a matter of pushing it in place and then taking a flame to it to cause it to shrink up and keep that solder in place. I then got to work doing the exact same on the other wire. That's the second wire all connected up. The next thing that we're gonna to need to do now is just tidy this up a bit. We'll secure the wires down so that they're all nice and tight with the base. But before we go gluing everything in place, we need to test it. This whole system's only gonna run off a single nine volt battery. It's very simple, so we put it in. And time to see if all of this has been worth it. Success. I know it looks like the third LED isn't lighting up, but it is. Um, they're green LEDs and they pull 3.3 volts each, so it's currently drawing more power than what the battery can supply. The model will have all LEDs light up at full brightness. Now that we know that's all working, we can go and secure the wires in place. We're just gonna use some hot glue for this, tack it down in two places. This is just gonna make life a little bit easier at the next step when we come to put all the basing texture on. And for that base, as we've got a lot of ground that we're gonna to need to make up to blend into the Tau Devil Ship print, I'm gonna be using some filler. This is stuff that I've just had lying in the cupboard for ages, uh, fancy using it up, and it's gonna be perfect for this application. So at first, it was quite dry. Then so what I need to do is go in, I just mixed a whole bunch of water with it, and you can see there now it's already coming out and spreading a lot easier. It was just a matter of going all around the base with this stuff and getting it to blend nicely in with the print. That covered really well. I'm happy with how this is building up the ground texture. This is then going to have another layer of rocks and gravel and sand and everything over the top of it. So we're just looking to really build this up in layers at the moment. Next step was to sort of blend this in. I don't want too many definitive sort of mold lines where I've just been going in and sculpting it at this point. So I wetted a sponge, dabbed it all down, grabbed the foot and then tried to line it up with the mark that I made earlier. I did extend this down onto the side of the base so I'd be able to see it. Once I was happy with how that was looking, I grabbed the foot to see how much extra we needed to build up around the toes. That's been smoothed out and I'm really happy now with how this is coming along. The next step is gonna to be to add some embellishments to it. So to start off with, we've got some different sized rocks a tub of small scatter type rocks here and then some larger stones in this one. We're just going to go around and sprinkle this on. We are going to be building up several different layers of sort of texture on this base. Well, a lot of this will probably be covered by the end of it, but it will give me an idea as we go along as to how I'm going to actually build this up and get it finished. And there we are, that's done and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. All we need to do now is let it dry. Right, it is now one week later. Yep, this took a whole week to dry. It's looking great though. I'm so happy with how this turned out. There was a little crack that's appeared here during the drying process, but we can get that covered up no problem. Here it is now with the foot on as well. All of this just works so well together. Everything meets up perfectly. There's some nice little recesses in the base that the feet go into. I'll end up molding those into the base a bit better once we end up building and coming back to this. So next episode, we are going to be building the legs and waist, getting the wiring all run up through those and the other foot as well. Thanks for staying around. If you're enjoying this build, please remember to like and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.